Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am back with another video for Scrappy Tales. This time we're going to create a 7x7 seven seven card. Now I don't go past 7x7. Seven seven. <laughs> Although if they have card bases bigger, let me know. Then we'll hit them. I'm going to be focusing on um, this is from the new release from October, and this is from the previous release. This is actually called Assorted Christmas Leaves. It is perfect for a stash builder. When it comes to leaves and stems and vines, they are great for your backgrounds and for fillers. We're actually going to turn some of these into a focal point. My background, I'm going to use, this is called the Music Note Swirl, and this is a stencil, and it is a two-part stencil. So you get your, I think this is called a staff, and then you get your music notes that are going to go along it. Let's get started. As always, die cutting will be done when we see each other on the other side. So here we go. We're going to start out with the stencil. Now I have cut and I used my deckel edge trimmer. Um, I've cut a piece of uh, dyed paper. So this is from my junk journal side. Now this is called grunge olive green. Um, so it's got a very faint green effect to it. I'm using my ground espresso uh, oxide ink and I'm using one of my makeup brushes um, to put that down. Now I'm making sure, and I'm just putting my hand around it, I'm going along those lines. Um, I am not a soft crafter. Um, I can, I just put all of me into it. So the way that I was putting down this color, I was making those, the, the stencil move, those lines in between. Um, I'm just not genteel. I, I look angelic, but I'm just not genteel <laughs> when I craft. I mean, I do CPR when I stamp and, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit lighter here, but I have, I have fun. So just making sure that I have my fingers down when I was putting that color through. I love this mat, this mat that I'm using. Um, I did a review for it. It's a, by Studio Board. It is all magnetic and those magnets that are holding it, it's not moving. So it's really nice that... Um, this does it or that holds those items there. I don't have to worry about tape or anything else because I always get that wrong. What's nice with the coffee dyed paper is again, oxides stay wet longer because of the pigment dye mix. When you put it on this coffee dyed paper, you've got to kind of move just a little bit quick, um, especially with the Versamark ink because it sinks right into it. Um, so I don't have, usually I have like flex along the staff because I used oxide. No, nope. it, it actually absorbs into the coffee dyed paper. It's really um, interesting. I'm going to go around the edges with the ground espresso as well. Again, just, nope, not vintage photo. I know you're all sitting there going, oh, she's not using vintage photo. No, I'm not. I'm using oxides on this one. <laughs> you guys, I can hear you. I hear you all. I hear you. Um, I just like the look when it comes to that green. I have a piece of, um, gold foil, uh, cardstock. This is by the Tim Holtz. Now I am not cutting out the center. Somebody's going to say, oh, you're wasting all that paper. You've got to cut the center out. The reason why I'm not for this one is because of the paper that I'm using. I'm using a coffee dyed paper. It's made with copy paper. It's not a cardstock. Um, if I make a mistake in placement, this paper is going to shred like there's no tomorrow. So I need to have that stability behind it. There is a method to my madness, people. Um, and there you go. I'm letting you in there. I found a piece. I dug into my scraps or my mixed media type paper, and I found this awesome dark gray uh, corrugated paper. 
and I just tore a section of it. It's a six by six pad. And I just put that down into the corner going from edge to edge. Again, I am very much into the mixed media. I'm very much into grunge and I'm very much into vintage. And I smile when I say that. Um, it, it's what I will pull into for my cards. Um, so by putting that there, that's where my greenery is going to set, which is actually the focal point of the card. So that black there where that dark gray is going to help stand it, make it stand out. I die cut, die cut three of the leaves, holly leaves from her die set. And that is why I love what you just saw. I love the Spellbinders reverse tweezers. They are straight. They are not angled. And because of that, I can bend and twist all of my leaves the way that I want them to go. Um, I learned this technique with painting uh, with glossy accents because they're holly leaves and how to bend those leaves um, from a designer that's associated with Spellbinders. Um, and it her name is Susan. And oh my God, what she does with her dyes to create flowers is absolutely phenomenal and to die for. It's wonderful, wonderful techniques. Um, I will try, if I remember, I will try to link down to her uh, below. I used two other dies from her uh, assorted Christmas leaves die set and I cut them in two different shades of green and I went with an olive green, not the bright typical, Chris, not a, a bright green, you know, a lime and a regular grass green, but more muted colors. And I'm just layering them together. I'm weaving them in together to just get those differences. You could take a piece of Bristol paper or watercolor paper and do watercolors or spray oxides if you have them or use your oxide pads if you have them, do ink smushing to get the different hues. I do like the look of two different card stocks to come together. Um, I would have added some of the brown to it, but these are very dainty and very fragile. And again, me, you know, I'm the type of crafter here. I didn't want to break them. Um, but again, you can see I'm just able to just layer these and you get this great blend of the colors. So I have two of those sprigs that are going to come down and meet in the middle. And I'm going to glue the three hollies that I've done together to create somewhat of a circle, but not in a circle because again leaves don't grow in a circle technically so again just trying to keep the natural look of those leaves um, is is just helpful so I'm moving those around um, by painting when you paint the glossy accents on it it does dry pretty quick these were just still a little bit damp but that was okay I was fine with it I didn't care um, I should have glued them together as I was painting them, but it kind of created this uh, almost a triangle, a definite triangle shape there. As I'm gluing these down, you can tell I'm only putting glue towards the bottom. I love it when the leaves are loose, when they are full. It just adds more dimension. Can you mail this? Yes. You would have to cut off the sides to make it even with a card. This card is seven by seven. Um, I do like the larger cards. It's a bigger landscape for me. Um, but it will add postage because there's a lot of dimension on this. So this is a card that I would hand, hand deliver to somebody. Um, there's a lot of cards that I have that way. I dug into my stash and I have these gems. Again, I purchased these from Amazon and I have them in all colors. They're, they come in one size. I forget the size that they are. Um, and I'm going to add the red berries in the center of all of those holly. I should have moved those just a little bit. It's kind of too triangly, but it still works. Because of all the work that I did on the front, I'm going to apply my tape runner to the card base, making sure it's sitting the right way because I almost put this on the wrong side. Just saying. Um, I do wish that I am not a tape runner person unless it's my ATG gun, like I've said before. Um, but I am really liking this My Stick tape runner, and it's the lines, it's not dots. Boy, is it strong. Um, I wish I could find the refills. That is the only tape runner I would stick with, unfortunately. There is snow in the forecast here, but it's not a blizzard. This is like maybe a, a dusting. <laughs> I do want to add um, some, um, just a few 
splatters going on. My focus for the splatters is the greenery. Um, and I will have just a few splatters going across the top. I did add more water to achieve a lighter splatter when it comes to the white. So the more water I add, the smaller my splatters are. If the less water I add, the more larger they are because I'm really having to flick it off of my brush. I also added a little bit of gold just to accent with the gold notes going through. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. So again, it's got that mixed media vintage feel going on with it. Again, push your, your items that you have in your stash to the limit. Um, add a little bit of grunge, add a little bit of dimension, add a little bit of something um, to just try it or stay with what you enjoy as well. It's all correct, it's all good, and it's all to be enjoyed. As always, the products that I use will be listed down below in the, in the video description. Um, so if you wanna check them out, please do so. Know that some of them are affiliate links, which means when you use that link to make a purchase, I receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. If you haven't yet, I'd love for you to subscribe. So make sure you hit that button, make sure you hit the thumbs up and hit the bell so that YouTube will hopefully notify you when the next video is live. I am very usually, well, every week I'm putting up videos. So at least it's one, it could be more. So continue to smile, continue to laugh and continue to enjoy this process. That's what this is all about. You are creating your art and it's unique and it's beautiful and you need to remember that. But always remember what's most important for me to keep going with this and always be creative. Until the next video, guys, take care.